Hello everyone and welcome to the first official episode of Samantha Spills. So what is Samantha Spills? It's so this is like a spin-off channel of my vlog channel because I talk so much and I cut out so much talking from every single video I make and finally I thought what if I just like make a video where I'm just talking so kind of a podcast but I don't know that I have the understanding and skills to create an actual podcast so basically it's just going to be me talking, telling you a little bit more about myself, hopefully give you a deeper understanding of who I am as a person and why I am this way. And we're going to do a little makeup while we do it. Well, because you guys liked it on my vlog channel and I thought it felt so natural just to be doing my makeup and chatting away like we're just getting ready for a night out and I'm spilling my heart and soul to you, So, which is basically who I am as a person. So anyways, that's what we're going to do. So today's topic is a topic I've been wanting to talk about for a while because I feel like it will give a better understanding of who I am as a person. Um, and it's just kind of, I've talked about it before, but not actually in a dedicated video. I do not have the correct color foundation at all. So we're going to be very tan and then we're going to lighten it with concealer is the vibe today. Um, so anywho, this is the story of how I ended up at the Playboy Mansion. Um, if you don't know, I am 34 years old, so I am not a youngling anymore, but I once was. <laughs> and, um... When I was in high school, there was a show on TV called The Girls Next Door. Um, and actually, Holly Madison and Bridget Marquard, is that how you say it? I say it like Lord Farquaad, but I don't know if that's correct. I'm probably saying it wrong. But anyways, they actually have a podcast right now all about their time at the Playboy Mansion and the show The Girls Next Door. And it's great, so everybody should go listen to it if it interests you. But anywho, when I was in high school, this show was on TV. And I watched it all the time. And was it appropriate for a high school girl to be watching? Probably not, but it was on E! And it was, for all intents and purposes, it was family friendly in the sense that you weren't seeing any nudity. There was not really any talk about like sex or anything like that. There was not really a lot of adult content on it. Obviously, there is a much darker um, other side to that story. But when you're young and you're only seeing this fun, you know, girly sisterhood of a TV show, it was very interesting to me. So I very quickly was like, I want that. <laughs> I want to be a part of that. I want to go there. I want to do that. So when I was pretty young, like essentially the second I turned 18, I began my pursuit in wanting to be a part of Playboy. Originally, that entailed wanting to be a playmate, which is so fucking funny now because I just thought back then being a pretty girl was all it would take if I knew then what I know now I mean there are so many things I probably could have became a playmate had I played my cards right or anything but I did not so I did various things to try to be a playmate um I hired a photographer who was actually like a family friend who specialized in nude photography however he was definitely more artistic and less playboy style um, but we worked together and he took some photos for me to submit to the magazine which ended up never going anywhere but they were cute I went to like a farm I had cowboy boots I was like posing on hay bales I don't know such as you would um, my mom came with me she has been there every step of the way of my journey and for anybody who criticizes her, um, 
she always knew I'm a person that's gonna do what I want like forever I've always been like that if people tell me no I'm gonna try even harder to do something so um so my mom knew this about me at a very young age so I think her perspective what first of all she never judged me she never ever judged me but her point of view was if you're gonna do this anyways which I know you will then I want to make sure you're safe I want to make sure you know you're loved and supported and you're only doing things because you want to not because you have to so I really appreciate her because of that love and support I have been able to pursue anything I want but also quit pursuing things when I decided it wasn't for me I also tried out I auditioned for the 55th anniversary playmate which is so funny they ended up picking a Canadian celebrity I believe I forget her name but she was like on TV she looked like a supermodel it was so funny it's just the confidence I had when I was young I'm like man I wish I could get that back um but yeah so anyways audition for that I my mom and I drove all the way to Chicago my mom is the nicest person because looking back on it I think she paid for that road trip just so I could go there because I wanted to go so badly and um yeah I went it was a positive experience I was very clear I was not gonna go further than that for that particular uh event but anyways back in the day um there were these websites you would go on now there's Instagram and Facebook for everything but back in the day there were websites you would go on that were specific to models looking for photographers photographers looking for models um clubs that were looking for quote unquote models to do certain jobs and gigs tv shows that needed extra i mean there was just like you would have to go online to find these things um there was also craigslist but you know it craigslist it used to be more legit like now well, i would never go on anything i found on craigslist but these websites were definitely like where you would go so I was on them and I remember one day I was just looking up castings and I was working at Hooters at the time so I was doing like Hooters swimsuit pageants and you know I was in college like I don't know just trying to find my way in the world trying to figure out I knew because of my height and my body type I've always been on the I don't know would you call it curvy I don't have like a quote-unquote curvy body but I have I'm shorter I have hips I have breasts um like large breasts I you know I definitely was always gonna be if I wanted to pursue any type of modeling it was always gonna be the sexier kind which I did not mind I was I've always been very very like in touch with my sexuality and my sexual side so anyways I was always looking up like different kinds of castings for the area I would do like monster energy drink jobs and like just promo modeling I guess is what you would call it and um, but one day I was on this website and I think I was looking in LA like listen my dreams were always big okay so for everybody who's criticizing my vision board I made that my <laughs> that my dreams are too big I've always reached for the stars okay I was in my little small town Minnesota house like going to college looking up casting calls in LA as if I had any shot of going there I had no money nothing so I yeah I was on a casting call in LA and I found one for Painted Lady at the Playboy Mansion and I was like oh oh my god this is my chance I'm gonna be the next Kendra Wilkinson a hundred percent what I thought like I was gonna go there I was gonna move into the Playboy Mansion I was gonna be the next Kendra Wilkinson like whatever so I made my mom take my submission photos for me we literally hung up a lavender sheet I wish I still had the pictures um I don't even know what email I would have used at the time because they're probably still in that email I should try and find them but anyways so I submitted my photos to this and um, 
and not long after that i got an email back saying that i had been accepted and this party in particular was the midsummer's night stream party which at the time was the only hugh hefner party the rest were like karma foundation or like you know people who rent the playboy mansion and throw parties and sometimes half and the playmates would go to those but like it was not like an actual playboy party this was the only one which also meant that supposedly allegedly half picked all of the photos for the painted ladies theoretically if that's true then half did see my photos and he liked what he saw and so he picked me for this event and um i was so excited i mean genuinely could not believe it kind of still can't like when i look back on it i'm like i i mean don't get me wrong i was really cute i was very young I think I was 20 when I did my first Playboy party. I didn't actually do that many, um, but I did a couple. But yeah, my first one, I think I was 20 because I remember, I remember not being 21. Um, I'll have to go back and check my age, but I feel like I remember not being 21 because I was really worried about like the alcohol and like I remember that being something that was like really on my mind the whole time. But yeah so anyways I got accepted the payment was $400 at the time this was what 2011 I believe was it 2011 2010 or 11 um, because I think I'd already dropped out of college at this time and I went to college till 2010 but I hadn't yet moved to LA so I don't know <laughs> actually I can't remember anything my memory is so bad but it was somewhere between 2009 and 2011 and um so so yeah then I had to start planning my trip so it so yeah the payment was $400 and I remember the guy who accepted my submission was like just so you know it's gonna cost you more to fly out here than you're being paid like are you sure this is what you want to do like usually we hire local girls who just live here and can just like stroll up to the mansion and I was like oh, I have to be there oh, I'm gonna be the next Kendra Wilkinson I have to be there so I was like yes I am gonna be there so I did I paid for a flight it was the first time ever in my entire life that I traveled by myself um, because at that point I don't think I had ever done any of my traveling pageants like nothing I, I'm pretty sure that was the first time I ever traveled by myself and I had not flown really ever like I think college dance competitions were the last time I'd flown before that and I cried believe it or not now I'm a flight attendant and I used to be so afraid of flying but um, yeah, so I went, I remember I got an air, not an Airbnb, it was a bed and breakfast, and it was honestly the cheapest thing in Hollywood area that I could find was this bed and breakfast, and it looked so cute on the website, and all of that, and, um, this is before Uber, so I have no recollection of how I got from the airport to this bed and breakfast I had to have taken a taxi because back then it was taxis and LA just had a plethora of taxis so I imagine I took a taxi which I'm so impressed by myself because knowing myself like that stuff scares me so much um I'm paranoid I just uber is so easy it's like traceable like back then we really used to just get in cabs and just be like hey <laughs> it's so crazy to think about now but it was so normal so yeah anyways little old me never left small town Minnesota um got in a cab I guess and went to my bed and breakfast and I showed up and again perspective is everything looking back on the whole experience I'm like it was probably a cute little bed and breakfast I think it had like just a couple of rooms it was a house essentially and I think it was in Studio City is where it was which is a nice part of LA I now know because I moved to LA a few years later and um it was like in a nice part of town a nice neighborhood and everything but I was on the ground floor and I there was just like a little check-in desk and it was a guy working and he was so pleasant I still remember his face he was like 
this I don't actually know how old he was at the time. I felt like he was an older guy, but I was so young that I don't know. But he had a big beard, and um, he was such, like, gave, like, like, the vibes were very nice looking back on it. But I think I was just so overwhelmed with the fact that, like, I just didn't know what I was doing, and I had never traveled before. So I got the key to my room, and I went into my room, and the window was on... It was like floor to, I, I, it was a big window and I remember it being really close to the ground and it's so funny because now I don't know how I had the instinct, it's just like, I don't know, it just comes to you, the instinct, but like I was so terrified because there was also a hole in the screen of the window, like a big hole and I remember being like, someone's going to crawl through my window at night, like I was so scared. I called my mom, I was bawling, like I'm pretty sure my mom was like, I'm gonna get on a flight and come there, mind you, my family is, has no money, like, I spent every dollar I had to get to this place, I had not been paid yet, so it was all just out of pocket, and uh, my mom was terrified, I was terrified, it turns out the guy at the front desk could totally hear me, so I had forgotten a phone charger, I will never forget that either, and so I had to go find a phone charger so I had to like go walk around and find one and luckily I was in walking distance of stuff because again in hindsight I'm like I don't remember exactly where I was but not every part of town is like right next to a drugstore it's not like New York you know but yeah so anyways I was so it was a good location all in all this place was great I should have been very happy that this place was what it was but um but yeah I was scared so I went out got a phone charger I kept calling my mom who just was like so afraid I was gonna die because I was afraid I was gonna die at the hands of somebody crawling through my window at night so I'm sure my mom didn't sleep at all that night and then the imposter syndrome kicked in is that what you call it? I don't even know if this is a case of imposter syndrome but what had started happening was but what had started happening was the realization that I sent my naked photos to a strange person on the internet who posted a casting call for the Playboy Mansion and they chose me after I had auditioned other times and never got chosen for anything. So I was like, this is fake. This is not even real. Um, who would choose me? I'm going to drive up to the Playboy Mansion and they're going to laugh in my fucking face. There's n absolutely no way this is going to be real. So after that started kicking in, I just was like, I don't know that I slept at all that night because I was literally just so terrified that I was going to get turned away. I was going to be embarrassed, but also I was like, what am I going to do? Like, what am I doing here? And yeah, so that was terrifying. So the way it works when you're a painted lady is it takes all day to get painted. So you show up at like nine in the morning or something and you're just there all day. Even though the party starts at like 7.30 p.m., you have to be there at like 9.30 in the morning. So morning comes, I call my little cab and I'm just like, I'm, I have the type of anxiety that like, it makes me, it makes me not do things. Like I will get so worked up and overwhelmed about something that I just, I won't go. And the only thing that gets me to go to things is when I have obligated to some sort of work thing, then I feel obligated to be there. But like my anxiety was working hard and I was really fighting it because I kept thinking they're going to turn me away. Like they're going to turn me away. This is fake, whatever. And I finally just had to be like, I just have to deal with it. Like if that happens, it happens. Like it is what it is. And so ultimately I ended up going. So I'm in the cab. The cab pulls up to the Playboy Mansion. I think the cab driver was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> Probably didn't go there often. Um, and when you get to the mansion, there's like, like a gate and it's like stone. And so you, it's like a rock you speak into like the intercom and you just 
give them your name and you're either on the list or you're not on the list, I guess. And so we go up and I tell the cab driver, you know, say, say my name. You're here with Samantha Olmstead, like whatever. And so we get there and I'm just like trying not to throw up in the back. And he says my name and the gates opened. <laughs> they opened. I could not believe it. The way I was just like, oh my God, I can't believe it, um, was crazy. So then I have no memory of actually going down to the gym, which the gym area, which you've seen on the Girls Tank Store plenty of times if you watch the show. It is, um, they did a lot of filming down there. But the gym is where you spend all day as a painted lady. That, that's where they do all the painting. And the painting was done by Mark Fraser, his wife, his son, and his daughter. So um, it was a very, like wholesome feeling experience which after hearing other people's experiences of the playboy mansion which i will not downplay whatsoever i i did not have that same experience my experience was just extremely wholesome it was just a family affair and it was wonderful i loved it they were incredibly kind people so I'm gonna put some glitter on today because why not? I just use this liquid eyeliner. People ask me all the time what the glitter is and then I just go like this. It's Urban Decay. They have tons of different colors, but full disclosure about the green one, the green one does not work this way for all over glitter. But I would think this one's the gold, but I imagine the silver would work the same. There. Who doesn't love a little glitter? Um, the other thing I remember is at the time, Hef was no longer dating Holly, Bridget, and Kendra. But he was, I don't believe he was yet dating Crystal. I believe he only had the twins living there. And so I felt like he was in the market for some new girls and I just had like a strange suspicion that whole day and this is all alleged this was just like my my perspective from my experience and I'm even weary to say it because I'm like you know somebody somewhere is gonna be like that's not true whatever and it's possible they were just being so nice to me but mind you I was very young and um I just remember people around me that day constantly saying things like, wouldn't it be so great to live here? Wouldn't you just love to live here? Just imagine what it would be like to live here. Like grown men. And um, somebody, and I don't even remember who because my memory is so bad, but somebody even came and got me and gave me a tour of the grounds. No one else that I'm aware of that day got a tour of the grounds. And... I noticed it like I was very aware of that fact so I called my mom at one point and I was like mom I I'm just getting a feeling that they're gonna try to introduce me to half and I'm worried that if you know I was just worried I would not have the strength to say no if any like other types of situations were presented to me if that makes sense so I because I get nervous and I get scared and so yeah I called my mom and then after that I think just having been aware or it could have all been in my head because I just might have gotten nervous about it or something um but nothing ever came of it nothing ever no one ever asked me to do anything other than the job of the painted lady so it ended up being a really fun experience like I said I got a little tour of the grounds I got to see like different parts of the playboy mansion most of it is closed off for the parties but um for that particular party we were handing out jello shots like in the entrance so it was super fun because we got to be in the entrance when everybody was coming in, celebrities would come in, and we'd be just like, hey, you want a jello shot? <laughs> it was like a party girl's dream. 
Um, but we were told we could not drink. I'm sure people did. I, I did in later years. Um, I did it for that party, but mostly because I think I wasn't 21, but I can't confirm that. So because the more I'm thinking about it, I'm not even sure I could be there if I wasn't 21. Come on. Come here. So again, I just like can't remember all the details, but I had a lot of fun. I remember that I, I was afraid to eat because I had been afraid to eat leading up to it, you know, because I wanted to be thin and I was nervous. It was my first time being naked in public and you are just full butt naked, like everything. And the way they do the paint is they airbrush. So they have stencils and, um, it was a full on, it was a full on process. The other thing is I got to wear the blue lingerie, which apparently was Hef's favorite. So I heard that day and I've held on to that fact other than somebody telling me, me that I have no other way of confirming it but like I don't know the whole thing it was it was a very interesting experience but yeah I got to wear this blue lingerie set and honestly like no no one knew it was body paint until I told them all the other girls that were working were so incredibly nice I'm trying to remember who was performing that night it might have been LMFAO it was just, I was small town Minnesota girl, just totally, I don't want to say starstruck necessarily, um, but just like awe struck by the whole thing. I was like, I couldn't have imagined being at a party like that, um, seeing celebrities and playmates who I had just like idolized on the TV show or just in movies and all this stuff. And it was just, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, I've been afraid to eat going into it. And so I waited at a certain point, the party would go on, but the, but the painted ladies weren't required to stay for the whole time. So the food at the parties was basically like buffet style. So I would just be like, oh my God, it looks so good. And so after our obligation was done, so let's say we were done at 930, but the party goes on until you know, two in the morning or something. Um, I don't know. I don't remember the time. It's been so long. My memory is not that good. But I remember after we'd be done, I would have not eaten all day. All day. I don't suggest it, but that's like the way that I lived my life at the time. And so I would go into the kitchen and talk to the people working there, making the food and be like, can I have extra food? And they would always give me like extra food. They were so nice. They would always talk to me. Basically every party there that I had ever gone to, it was the same bartenders and they were so fun. I wish I remembered the man's name, but um, there was always one guy in particular who just was such a character and he had a certain look about him. And um, you, so he was just easily recognizable and he always remembered me. So I felt like Every time I was like, hey, during setup, I would go hang out with them and just say hi. And it just became really fun. Like it, it truly is the one thing I will say about my experience having been there only a few times was that the whole idea around this community and family that they built there, I think just every aspect of it like is so true. They were really, it was always like a lot of the same people and that was fun if they were good people, you know? So I had that positive experience. One time was when I was in the kitchen afterwards, I met, um, I met one of Hugh Hefner's son just poking around, like trying to get food in there. Um, so it was just fun. It was just a different kind of experience. So I did that for a couple of years. Um, I think the Halloween parties were some of my favorite though, because the body paint, the body paint was so fun for the Halloween parties. Also, I went to um, at least one Halloween party and I made my own like bra and underwear <laughs> for the party that was all like bedazzled, but I thought it was so good at the time. But really all these girls were paying like probably so much money for really like beautifully bedazzled like 
Halloween costumes at these shops in LA and here I'm at home like hot gluing which is totally you can make your own really good but mine was not that good <laughs> not even close it's fun to look back on it now because it no longer exists to be able to say that I went and I did it because it's definitely not there's nothing like it now again probably for good reason <laughs> You know, like I've seen all the documentaries and things, so I'm not going to try and say that it should exist and should be back, but it is one of those experiences that no one's ever going to be able to have again. So it it is interesting. It does give me good stories to talk about, but nothing really extraordinary happened to me there. I did get to like meet Flo Rida and dance with Flo Rida on stage, um, met a couple of celebrities nothing again nothing like out of the ordinary one party in particular i went to it was a it was snoop dogg's birthday party i remember that so um it was a rented party it was thrown by pbr and colt 45 and so we were all painted as like pbr promo whatever and i was like head two toe painted as a PBR can but I kept doing this I kept doing this stupid pose all night like what they kept calling it is this the Vogue I don't know I have my hands like up above my head because I was like I'm a PBR bottle I'm pretty sure PBR does not come in bottles <laughs> I did not know that at the time so anyways I was like told I was totally painted as a PBR can um, and so I was taking pictures with people all night because that was like very obviously body pink. So it was literally here down. Like other girls got cute little t-shirts and whatever. And, um, and so after taking so many photos with people, the paint was rubbing off only on one of my nipples, like only that area. So it was like white body paint, head to toe, <laughs> chin to toe. <laughs> except for right here where it was flaking off was like red and I have a photo I'll have to find it but I'm pretty sure it's in my phone I have a photo of me and my one of my really good friends at the time um who did some of these parties with me a couple of them and it was us two and Travis Barker I never got photos with people because I'm just very much not a can I get my photo with you type of person I feel awkward I'm uncomfortable I feel like they don't want to even though I, I mean at this particular event I'm sure they expected it but like my friend was that type so since I was tagging along with her I got to reap the benefits of it however it's one of the funniest pictures of all time because it was Travis Barker and she was like oh my god let's get our picture with Travis Barker so I was like okay like fine I guess so we get our picture with Travis Barker she looks great Travis Barker looks great and then there's me just ah nipple like <laughs> So bad but it is so funny I still show that picture to everybody and I can't even really post the picture because I have to black out the part that's funny but anyways it was a great time good experience I had fun doing it and I just feel like it is an important part of my history because um, especially after I started my spicy website people like were shocked that I would do such a thing and I'm like listen I was trying to get into Playboy for like a solid six years of my life <laughs> there I had my mom take naked photos of me before so this is not something that's out of the ordinary for me or totally like uncharacteristic it's just more fun because I get to do it all by myself and I actually get paid for it where like a lot of that if you're a playmate you would have you would make money for it but now after listening to the girls next door it wasn't all that it was cracked up to be I think that's for sure um, not saying I would have regretted it or that any of those playmates regret it, but it definitely was like glamorized into this huge like money making fame making thing and it was not like that I don't think but this dog right now you guys can't even see but she's just resting her head on my leg listening to me talk it is the most precious thing <laughs> oh I woke her I'm sorry <laughs> anyways I guess that's it that's my story of how I ended up at the Playboy Mansion after years and years of trying it was just manifesting a life like Kendra Wilkinson that ended up getting me to the Playboy Mansion um, and it was a great time so 
thanks for listening and chatting with me and putting on a little makeup today. I was going to put on eyelashes, but I think I decided against it. I am going to curl these, though. We've got the Better Than Sex Mascara on, which is my favorite mascara. I've yet to find one I like more. And this is a Tarte eyelash curler. I've heard you're not supposed to curl your eyelashes after you put mascara on, but I always do because as soon as I put mascara on, they uncurl. My eyelashes have yet to fall out, but I think that might be the, the fear. There we go. Ah, done. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed the story. Um, let me know if there's any other topics you guys want me to talk about. I don't know, otherwise I guess I'll just start finding random stories of my life to tell. I love you all so much and I'll see you in my next video, bye.